So this is the Leaving Cert 2013 chemical equilibrium question. So let's have a look at this question. Pretty um, standard equilibrium question again. Same things come up again and again when we look at these past papers. It's opening up with the three core equilibria definitions, which you really should know if you're thinking about approaching this question. And then it's looking at the classic equilibrium um, reaction between iron and thiocyanate, iron, the form iron, iron thiocyanate, looking at some issues around the Chatelier's principle, then calculating equilibrium constants, equilibrium concentrations, and uh, finally another query looking at now the effect of temperature. So, first of all, what are these definitions? So these are things you should really be able to uh, roll out quite easily. So chemical equilibrium is where the concentrations of reactants and products in a chemical reaction are constant because even though the reactants are still reacting and the products are still going back to revert to reactants, the rates of these forward and re reverse reactions are equal. So that as products form, they are also at the same rate decomposing back to reactants. So therefore the actual concentrations don't change. So when we reach chemical equilibrium, the concentrations of the reactants and products are constant. It's called dynamic because as I say, the reaction is continuing. Even though the concentrations are constant, there are still underpinning reactions, forward reaction and the reverse reaction happening, but they're just both happening at the same rate. So therefore the concentrations don't change, but it's dynamic because there is still movement involved. And Le Chatelier's principle says that as um, that because an equilibrium is a low energy state for for a reaction, if we try and move it out of that, uh, the the system will try and shift so that it restores to that um, environment or that state. So Le Chatelier's principle states that systems at equilibrium move to oppose any disturbance such as temperature change, concentration change, or pressure change. All right, so some um, applications now of Le Chatelier's principle. So the first one's a very common one. What happens if we add in some um, reactant or, or product? So here, we are adding in KCNS. Now KCNS is the salt of CNS minus. So this question is really saying we're increasing the concentration of CNS minus. So Le Chatelier says that the system will um, move to oppose that change. So if we are adding in reactant, the system will shift toward the product to try and reduce the concentration of reactant that we've added in. So adding in um, a reactant, the concentration, the, the equilibrium will shift towards the product, so therefore the concentration of the other reactant, Fe3 plus, will decrease. What will the change of pressure be? Well, the change of pressure will be um, um, will have no effect on the equilibrium because um, this, equi this equilibrium is in the liquid phase. So there are no gas molecules involved, so the effect of any pressure change is negligible. Okay, so C is asking to write the equilibrium constant, Kc, for this reaction. The equilibrium constant is given by this general expression, concentration of products over reactants, accounting for the number of moles of each. So we've got concentration of products, iron thiocyanate, divided by concentration of reactants, Fe3 plus times CNS minus. An easy six marks. And now we want to work out what the equilibrium constant is. So here we are given a way to work out the equilibrium concentrations, and we use those values in our expression for equilibrium constant to work out Kc. So we're told that we have 1 by 10 to the minus 3 moles of both of our reactants and it's in 1 litre. So that means we can easily calculate the concentrations because we have 1 by 10 to the minus 3 moles per litre so they both give 1 by 10 to the minus 3 molar. We can assume that before the reaction starts there is no concentration of product so that's zero. And then we're told the concentration of product at equilibrium. So in other words after the reaction starts when it reaches equilibrium the concentration of product at equilibrium is 1.1 by 10 to the minus 4 molar. That means then the concentration of our product increased from 0 to 1.1 by 10 to the minus 4 molar, so it increased by this amount. 
if our product increased by this amount, that means our reactants must have decreased both by the same amount because it's a one to one molar ratio. So that now allows us to calculate the equilibrium concentrations of our reactants. So now we know the equilibrium concentrations of our products and reactants. We can plug those numbers into our expression for Kc, concentration of products, divided by concentration of reactants, and that gives us our equilibrium, um, value, equilibrium constant value rounding up to be 139. Okay, and then part D, uh, back to Le Chatelier, the examiner obviously ran out of things to ask. So here we have a question saying that when the system was cooled down, the red coloured faded. In other words, the cooling shifted the equilibrium back to the reactant side. So it's asking whether this temperature change, what, what, what effect this temperature change has had on Kc. So remember, equilibrium constant is a constant at a particular temperature. If we change the temperature, the equilibrium constant changes. So if we are forming more reactants, well then obviously our equilibrium constant is going to be smaller. It's going to be a bigger number downstairs here in this expression, so Kc will be smaller. And then it's asking, is the forward reaction exothermic or endothermic? When we decreased the temperature, we favoured the reverse reaction. So the system tried to um, respond by increasing the temperature again. So if we decrease the temperature and the system moved towards the reverse side, the, the reactants, that means the reverse reaction is exothermic, so that means the forward reaction is endothermic.